Hey everyone, welcome to the Cybercrime YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to discuss the recent attack on a Florida water treatment plant. Some of my background, I'm the, currently the Chief Information Security Officer at a university in the United States. I hold a BS in Computer Science and MBA. I'm a CISSP holder and I also hold two GIAC certifications, the GCED and the GSEC. So the scenario I want to talk about is a Florida water treatment hack that occurred this month um, it was unsuccessful, thankfully, as the attacker tried to increase the lye levels in the water supply. I'm not a chemist by any means, but I suspect this would have poisoned the water effectively and made it undrinkable. But thankfully, somebody, somebody somehow was able to thwart the attacker. Note there are plenty of media outlet articles about this, and the details are hazy, as they probably should be to some extent. But anyway, you can read up about this. I'll include a link or two in the description to this video so you can read more about it. So in general, what the hacker did to get in was they used TeamViewer, exposed TeamViewer clients on the internet to breach the network. Apparently TeamViewer did not require multi-factor authentication, only required a single password. And news outlets indicate that passwords are shared across systems and or user accounts. And so that facilitated the attacker getting around the network and entering the network. Also, it's unclear as to whether the industrial control systems, or i.e. the systems that control the water treatment plant, were in a segment on their own or if they were in the general network along with the other client computers. But in general, uh, the attacker used TeamViewer. Something else to consider, and again, this is one of the unknowns, is that TeamViewer is often used by Shadow IT, Shadow IT being users on your network who want to have a backdoor into the network or a remote connection that's easy for them to use. So they can set up, you know, i.e. they could, for example, set up a team viewer connection to let them remote in from home. And this may circumvent other controls in place. You know, again, there's no, uh, the media reports aren't uh, very detailed, but there may have been a VPN connection that you could have established that wasn't, or that a VPN connection that's required for remote access that wasn't, but it's unclear as to whether team viewer is used for regular administration by IT, if it's supported by IT, or if it's shadow IT. So there are several mistakes made here, and one thing to consider with this hack is that by no means is the hack highly specific to a water treatment plant. In other words, the attacker didn't use attacks that are specific just to a very uh, uh, specific and uh, special water treatment plant equipment. These attacks can be used against many networks unfortunately exposed to the internet uh, that are vulnerable. So some of the mistakes made by the water treatment plant, they use a single password for multiple accounts or multiple systems for TeamViewer. TeamViewer access was exposed to the internet and didn't require a VPN connection. I'll talk about this more. I'll talk about all these more here shortly. No multi-factor authentication was required. And also, last but certainly not least, deprecated operating systems were used by the water treatment plant, specifically Windows 7. So what can you do to improve security? You'll hear me harp about this in my channel a lot, but using multiple layers of security can provide uh, extra security for you, controls that if you have one layer of security that's breached, you have other layers to protect you. Improving password security certainly could have helped here. Uh, more importantly, requiring a VPN connection to access the network via TeamViewer would have helped. Requiring multi-factor authentication likely would have thwarted the attacker. And last but not least, using supported operating systems would help with uh, reducing the, the vulnerability to lateral movement once the attacker is in the network. So again, harping on the multiple layers of security, it's important to use multiple layers as this provides defense in depth. In this scenario, as we're going to outline, keep in mind that had the Florida water treatment plant implemented one, two, three, or four of these layers of security, it's very likely that just one additional layer of security could have thwarted the attack much less two and three additional layers. So keep that in mind, and keep that in mind when you're defending your own network. So improving password security, the water treatment plant shared passwords, as I mentioned, between systems. Uh, never share passwords between user accounts and between systems, because that means you're one shared password away from having multiple systems or accounts compromised. Um, also, something else you should do is whenever an employee leaves the organization, rotate the passwords associated with the accounts they have access to. And then finally, rotate passwords on a regular basis. Um, 
there is uh, some discussion as to how effective this is, but one good thing about rotating passwords, even if it's on an annual basis, is that if you overlook rotating the password associated with somebody who's left the organization, if you rotate the password after, say, a year or six months, you know that after that year that nobody knows that password who shouldn't know it. So this is probably, I would say, the strongest layer of security that could have been implemented here, but had the TeamViewer connection required first a VPN connection, that likely would have thwarted the attacker. So one great thing about the VPN, requiring a VPN connection is that you're immediately reducing the exposure of your clients to the internet. In other words, currently with that wider treatment plant, you could simply run a scan, an inbound scan on the network, pick up that TeamViewer connection and connect in. But now if you require a VPN, that first means you have to authenticate, establish a VPN, and then once you're there, yeah, of course, you can then run an in-map scan, but that what that means in effect is you're no longer exposed to the entire internet. So yeah, the immediate win is that you, you definitely limit who can connect immediately. And um, even better with your VPN, you should require multi-factor authentication. So what this means is even if the attacker were able to compromise a set of credentials, a username and a password, they'd still need to have another factor, i.e. Uh, MFA token, MFA device, or a smartphone to connect. So that makes the hack much more difficult, much more challenging. And what that means usually is that that means the attacker is more than likely going to find lower hanging fruit because this is much more difficult to execute. And of course, as you know, you know there are certain attacks against MFA, like uh, uh, I believe uh, uh, SMS swapping, I believe is a term that's used where you can take control of somebody's uh, phone number and SIM card and then uh, uh, have the SMS uh, token sent to you. As an attacker, but of course, that's a lot more difficult, it requires more effort, and so it's going to likely challenge an attacker and cause them to look at look for a lower hanging fruit. So, most importantly, that means that SCADA systems are no longer a password away from being compromised when you have multi factor in place. Certainly, keep this in mind your own network. Another piece the water treatment plant needs to look at is running supported operating systems. There's no indication in the media as to whether this impacted the attack, but one thing's for certain is once the attacker was on the network, had they wanted to, they could have certainly exploited systems on the network much more easily if they're running Windows 7. Windows 7 is deprecated as of, I believe, either 2018 or 2019. And what that means is, is that Microsoft's no longer issuing security updates for Windows 7. So as time goes on, more and more vulnerabilities are discovered, and that means more and more security holes for attackers to take advantage of. Something else is that with newer operating systems, you're going to have, in general, stronger security controls. Newer operating systems will support newer and stronger protocols and deprecate older protocols. They'll support newer cryptography, stronger cryptography, and deprecate older cryptographic suites. And of course, there are many other examples about uh, stronger security that's supported in newer operating systems. But in general, if you're running an unsupported OS that's not being patched, you're really asking for it. Uh, so um, in this case, I'm really surprised that they're running an older OS. There certainly aren't any risk frameworks that support this. Uh, general knowledge in general in the security industry recommends against running unsupported OSs. So one last piece to discuss here, and again, I'm not sure based on media outlet reports about the placement of SCADA and industrial control systems on the water treatment plant network. But something to keep in mind here is that you can greatly increase security by isolating the SCADA systems. Uh, in other words, with the computers that control water water uh, treatment levels and water chemical levels, if you put those in a, in a segment on a subnet on their own that requires uh, specific credentials from people who have them on a need to know basis, that means you have yet another layer of security in place. So had the attacker been able to breach you know, the VPN connection with MFA, had they been able to breach that and gotten into the network, uh, even once they're in the network, they'd still have to move laterally, identify the correct subnet to move to, identify the correct systems, and from there, gain more credentials to gain access to the SCADA systems. So in other words, you have an additional strong layer of security there. So it makes breaching the SCADA systems, the ICS systems, that much more difficult. And certainly on your own networks, if you have critical systems that especially impact, uh, could impact the lives of others, certainly keep those on, on isolated segments. That way, if you do have a breach, it's much more 
difficult for the attacker to breach those subnets and those systems. In summary, it's important to keep in mind defense in depth, and again, harping on the multiple layers of security. It's important to keep in mind here how, how on this water treatment plant network, how additional layers of security could have prevented the attack. And certainly keep in mind on your own network, what can you do on your networks to improve security? What can you do to thwart attacks? You know, what's one layer you can implement, say, this, this week even, or this month even? Uh, can you add an additional layer the next month? And by doing so, you're increasing your security posture, improving your security posture. By all means, take a layered security approach to your network, to your organization. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.